Good morning. So I am looking at the rear wiper on my Kia Soul. So uh, the other day it just stopped working and I've been trying to look online and it's been driving me mad because there is no information on it <laughs> from what I can tell whatsoever. Uh, but I've done some diagnosis and I have managed to find out what the fault is. So I'll quickly run through with you what I've done so far and what the fault actually is because uh, it seems it might be a common fault with uh, rear wipers on most cars to be honest. Okay so I started by removing the cover in the boot here with this it's a screw there and a screw there and then the rest of it's just clips so you just pull that off uh, and these are reusable clips you, they're not the ones that ping off everywhere and you have to buy replacements. Uh, so this is the mo windscreen motor here um, so you've got the connector plug there and as you can see that has got four wires going to it. Now, not knowing what I was doing, I did a little bit of tracing. The black wire seems to be your ground. Your orangey coloured wire appears to be permanently live. And then the other two seem to be some sort of control signal to it. Um, so I did this with the ignition on and the windscreen wiper turned to the on position. And nothing was happening. Uh, what I did... Which is, I'm not sure if it's the right thing or not, but I shorted out with a little link wire there, shorted out through in there between the orangey coloured one and the blue one, and that made the wiper work. So I was confident that the motor hadn't seized and there wasn't a problem there. So I thought, okay, let's start tracing the wiring back. So I went along here, thought, right, okay, plug connector, checked all that, nothing wrong there, because apparently you can end up with dodgy pins in there. And I was tracing it back and it goes through here and I was doing that and then all of a sudden the windscreen wiper works. It's like, ah, got a broken wire in there. And apparently that's quite a common fault. So to get this out it's quite easy. You literally just pull the rubber out like that. Uh, but then I found it was a little bit too tight to work on. This did have black electrical tape around it, which I have removed because I've started diagnosing. Um, but yeah, so to get a little bit more work flex on there, up here there's a little grey peg that sticks through there. If you just squeeze that and push that, that's the one that holds that cable in place. So that gives you a little bit more slack on the top there, so you can get that down. And then underneath the rubber seal here, if you use a screwdriver, here we go, you can pry this cover off here. And again, there's another one of those cable clips just there. Now that one I found a lot more difficult to get to because I can't seem to get that cover any further. But I pried that off with a screwdriver as well. And that gave me more slack so I could pull it up this way. So once I've managed to get some more slack on here, um, I started double checking which wires went to the motor. Uh, now up here, it is a, a blue, orange and yellow. But when you come to this plug, they change colour. Uh, so the blue is now actually a white. Orange and yellow stays, uh, so black and yellow stays as black and yellow. Uh, and I can't remember what the orange went to, but they're different on both sides of the plug. So just double check that. It might be different colours on your car anyway. Um, but yeah, so it comes down to this section here. And as I was taking the tape off of here, I found the white one, which goes to the blue cable, has snapped. So I'm going to have to carefully take some more of the tape off of here, fish that wire back through there, and then joint the two together. Now, you could, most people will be tempted to use a crimp connector in this situation. That is a flexible point, and a crimp connector is rigid fixing. So crimp connector won't work here. What you want to do is find the two ends and solder them together is probably the best bet, and then put some heat shrink sleeving or electrical tape over the top of them. So yeah, let's get that fixed. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I've crimped it. Uh, obviously, because it was a snapped wire, uh, I couldn't just join those two pieces together because I'd be a little bit short. Uh, so I had to add a little extra wire to what was already there to bridge the gap. Um, and I couldn't hold one wire and solder it to the other wire. I was bouncing all over the place and I thought I'm going to do more damage. Uh, and both sections are going to have solder on them, so they're going to be fairly rigid anyway. So 
I might as well do, do a crimp, know it's a proper joint and it's going to be covered in tape so it shouldn't flex too much but if it fails again I know that's the most likely point it's going to fail at. But yeah so now to cover that lot back up in tape and uh, close all this up. That was easier said than done. Right so uh, I put a layer of tape over that connector so to insulate it from the other wires. I then moved all the wires so they laid and sat flat uh, or at least neat against each other. Uh, I then started from the bottom and worked my way up, got as high as I could, slid the rubber back down so I could then finish all the way up to there as a separate section. Put the cable tie back around the rubber boot there, that stops the cables from sliding here. And then you can just push these rubber grommets back in. Um, it's a case of remembering where everything went, so there's this slack here. And there's that cable clip in there to do. I'll do that in a minute because I think I need both hands. And then the rest of the slack comes up this way. And there's another cable clip there. Uh, so I'll get that done. This is nice and simple. You just line it up. There we go. That's all that back in place. Just got to put those screws in. Right. Well, that wasn't easy, but I found if I put a clamp in there, <clears throat> that held it open just enough for me to get my hand in. I could get one hand in from above, one hand in from the side there, push that clip back into place. And then there's the clips there that should just hammer back into place. There we go. So that is everything back together again. Put the screws in there. And obviously I have tested it, but I'll do it again. So there we go, all working again as it should be. So uh, I'm pleased I've managed to diagnose that fault because otherwise I would have been paying out, I would have either gone for a garage, which uh, would have been over a hundred pounds to get this repaired, um, or I would have started by buying a new wiper motor, which start from about 25 pounds for a second hand one. Um, and then you would have been looking at maybe the switch on the ignition. And then there's a control module somewhere in the car. I can't even find that. Um, that's somewhere behind the dash I believe um, but yeah all of that for a broken wire <laughs> so hopefully this has helped you if you did leave a like and I shall see you later